So what I'm going to do here is to take you through an example of peer review for the article entitled Operational Research in Developing Countries, The What, Why and How. Now this is an article that has actually been written by some of the leading operational research scientists around the world, but the example I would like to give you here and a glimpse of its content, because this is a pretty extensive peer review, uh, is the uh, difference you might find with the opinions or the comments of the reviewers. Often peer review is very difficult, it can appear difficult, and um, what you have to do is to be perseverant, uh, you have to have a thick skin, and you have to go through this process because it is a key to actually getting your paper published. And I want to show you, particularly in this, um, in this pair review, and I've highlighted some areas in yellow, which I'll read through, showing you the difference in, uh, in how some of the pair reviewers can review your paper and the comments they give you. So I'll start with uh, reviewer one. Now, this was, of course, a paper submitted to the Lancet of Infectious Diseases and that has been published. So reviewer one, we're on page one, while the authors, mainly from Europe, have been extensively involved in R&D work on TB and HIV in Africa for many years, and the subject of operational research is important, this is a very poorly written article, and I have major concerns about nearly every aspect of the article. And then going further down at the end of this page, uh, this article is flawed in several ways. We'll go to page 2. A. The coverage of the subject is peripheral, scanty and meandered, and with no proper focus. The value of the manuscript is questionable. The subject matter and contents are not novel or informative. It's more of the same old. B. The focus is a negative one and not neutral. It is unnecessarily critical of several issues raised within it without much justification and evidence base. Many of their facts are wrong, particularly about the benefit to African scientists and capacity development. C. They try and define the subject operational research in a roundabout and jerky way. And yet, it has been defined several years ago by themselves in past publications, e.g. Harris and Tuberculosis 2003, and by the WHOC Lancet 2003 reference, and many others, including the Global Fund, etc., um, etc. Et now I'll go further down, and let's go to page 4. The authors should have included in their viewpoints what their failings in operational research have been over the past two decades or so that they have worked in Africa. Inclusion of these in the personal viewpoint would make the manuscript a bit more interesting, focused and reality-based. Now, we found that a very good comment and took that, of course, on board. Further down, on the same page 4, the example of Tukur they gave us is rather naive, simplistic and presumptive. And it is quite extensive, as you can see. Now, here's the reviewer 2, who has a contrasting view at the end of, end of page 4. Reviewer number two, the paper by Zakari et al. is interesting, well written, and the topic is relevant. An interesting point is that the authors base what they say in their experience in the field. Several key points on how to better implement operational research in the field are discussed. I highly recommend this paper for publication in the LID with some minor comments. So you can see the distinctly contrasting views of the two reviewers. So we'll go further down, page 6. Now the editor looks at these two contrasting views and he writes, as you will see, the comments from the reviewers are quite conflicting. We're interested in seeing how you respond to the concerns made by reviewer 1. If you decide to submit a revision, which we very much hope you will, we will consider how to proceed from there. So the editor has actually given you a white card saying, well, let's see how you tackle these two reviewers and we will decide then 
on how or whether we will accept your paper. So this is a very interesting situation where you have to use um, and you have to act in the best of your ability to try to give the best possible picture to the editor. So I'll go down and see how we try to respond to this paper. And uh, if you went down to page 9, this is generally how you would need to uh, respond to your peer review. You start with a covering letter to the editor. So, um, the peer review editor, the Lancet Infectious Diseases, Person X, and you give the reference and the title, and it's generally an R1, which means a first revision. Thank you very much indeed for your letter dated 14th July 2009, and the comments and suggestions of the two reviewers. We have been carefully through the peer review and have revised our paper accordingly. We feel that the paper is much improved as a result of this peer review process, and thank you for taking it to this stage. Please find for your kind consideration the following. A point-by-point -point response to the comments and suggestions of the reviewers. You have to make this. For every point, you have to respond. Second, a new revised version of the manuscript marked R1 red. We've highlighted main changes in red font in order to facilitate review have, and have not in fact used tracking has looked very messy. So you need to be able to highlight what the changes you are you have made um, are and depending on the journal guidelines you should follow those. A new revised and clean version marked R1 clean is also um, attached. And that's a covering letter. If you went further down to page 10, here's our point-by-point -point response to the reviewer's suggestions. Now, the response to the reviewer 1 was not very friendly. We thank the reviewer for reviewing this paper and for the detailed comments and suggestions. We've tried to revise the manuscript in line with these comments and suggestions, and the specific changes in response to different points raised include. Now, we've thanked the reviewer and we've not gone into all kinds of discussions, say we disagree with the reviewer, we find his tone rather, you know, discomforting, all that sort of thing is to be avoided and get straight to the point. So here's going to page 11, how we address some of his comments. So his first comment was that this is a very poorly written article. The way we responded to this is we just said we find this comment a little difficult to address since the second reviewer offers an alternative view and states that this is a very well-written article. So, and we've left it at that. Um, however, we have taken this concern of the first reviewer seriously and have made several amendments as follows. We've tried to improve the English writing style because he commented that the writing style was poor. We've introduced new paragraphs, references and a box to highlight our operational research failures and provide some solutions. We've highlighted new capacity building initiatives. So we've gone deeply into trying to address some of his criticism. The next main point was it's a poorly focused paper and there's no clear message portrayed. Um, we, we've responded to this by saying we have now clearly stated that this paper focuses on the issue of operational research from a program perspective. We have also tried to make it clear that this paper is about defining operational research, the what, explaining its relevance, the why, and describing the enabling factors and challenges of implementation, the how. We now feel the paper is more focused and does portray a clear message. Um, coverage is peripheral, scanty, and is more of the same old. Uh, we've responded to that by saying we find this criticism difficult to understand as a second review finds paper interesting and relevant. In our literature search, we have not come across general papers on operational research written by program personnel who have been involved with this type of activity in the field. And as such, we do not think that this is more of the same or. And it goes on and on and on. And it gives you a good example here of how exactly you need to try to respond to the reviewer. Now, this is a response to the second reviewer, who is much more favourable. We thank the reviewer for the reviewing this paper and for the very encouraging comments and suggestions. Uh, and we've actually addressed the different uh, comments that this reviewer has made. And then we respond to the editor. 
uh, and we um, have actually written to him saying that, well, the uh, manuscript uh, word limit is 3,000 words. Uh, this is on page 16. We're not sure how strict you are with the word count. Responding to the reviewer's concerns have obviously led to a longer article. However, if the paper is deemed acceptable, we of course will comply with any further instructions about word count. Uh, I think we were close to about 3,500 words. The editor felt that was fine. This paper was accepted and published. Uh, I think the clear message I want to give you here is that be perseverant, have thick skin and try as much as possible to address the reviewer comments in a very rational manner. If you're depressed when you get these sort of comments, uh, take some time off, uh, think carefully about it after a few days and start to tackle it. And here's another example written by a very senior person. This is an article we sent to Tropical Medicine International and Health, page 17. I won't go into the details, but I just want to highlight a comment uh, the person, um, the reviewer made, and this is highlighted on page 90. In all honesty, this is probably the worst paper I have ever reviewed. There's nothing new or interesting in the findings, except perhaps the remarkably good control of hypertension. And the principal author on this paper is somebody who's probably done yeah, who's done over 500 leading papers in operational research around the world. So be ready for this sort of uh, comment. Uh, it is normal in peer review that you see this, uh, but uh, everyone faces it, including those who are most experienced. Uh, and you can surely uh, tackle them if you address them, uh, as I have done in this example, in a very rational and calm manner. Thank you.